If you're getting back into eBay as a seller trying to make some extra money, uh, or maybe it's your first time doing it, this video is for you. It's how to avoid the common scams that afflict sellers. Uh, there's a whole different set of scams that afflict buyers, but for this video, we'll talk about what happens to sellers and how to avoid it because let's, you know, let's say you sell something for 500 bucks, you don't want to lose that money. You don't want to uh, waste all that hard work. You don't want to be on the short end of the stick, as they say. So one of the most common scams that you're going to see against sellers is the item not received scam. Uh, let's, this is why I think you should really always be purchasing shipping through eBay or through someone like Pirate Ship uh, where it's going to automatically upload tracking because either you forget to upload tracking, you go to the post office and you purchase tracking but you forget to put it on there or you ship it uh, something, you know, for example, like USPS letter for if you are doing that for some reason and there's not tracking included, uh, the buyer can easily say, I didn't get this, even if they do have it and because you can't prove with tracking they do have it, you can get scammed that way. Uh, and eBay is going to side with the buyer 100% of the time. If you buy tracking on eBay or another company like ShipStation, uh, like Stamps.com, that have integrations with eBay, it'll automatically upload tracking, and that's going to protect you in the case of a, a buyer not received scam. They can still say they didn't get it, but as long as you go into that case and say, hey, here's the tracking it was shown as delivered, you're going to be fine. Now, there have been times when things get lost in the mail, that happens all the time. And if you don't have insurance, you're gonna be out of that money. Like I shipped a book media mail the other month, uh, it did get lost and I did have to refund them even though eventually the book did get uh, delivered to them months late. I took it up with eBay, I got a, a credit reimbursement, but still, that is going to happen. The second thing you're gonna see quite often is, oh, it's broken, you know. I, what am I going to do with this? It's broken. I received it when it's not broken. So you can't really protect against them making these claims, right? I can't stop people from lying. That'd be nice, but I can't do that. Uh, what I can do is always demand, you know, always explain that in order to process a refund on an item that broke in transit or broke uh, a day or two or within the 30-day time frame I allow for returns, they have to actually return the item. It's very easy for buyers to say, oh, it's broken, I threw it away, refund me, or things like that. Uh, I blame Amazon for encouraging this return whatever you want, you know, policy over the past decade it's been at this point, you know, things are changing, maybe free returns are going away, maybe this mentality is, is in its waning years, but the fact remains that right now, uh, there are people being scammed by buyers who say it's broken and because the sellers don't want to have bad feedback because they don't want to deal with a broken return, uh, they're going to just refund the item and not deal with it. Now, of course, there are circumstances where it makes sense just to say, you know what, I'm done with this. Uh, for example, if the money that you're going to make on the item or make on the item if you resell it or if you fix it and resell it if it actually is broken, uh, is going to be less than the cost of a return. So sometimes a return shipping might be uh, you know, 40 bucks if you're, if you're doing something crazy, if it's like a, uh, I don't know, a very heavy item from Alaska, that could be a very expensive return shipping option. You do have the option to send them your own return label, uh, and there are some bad people out there saying just send a uh, four ounce first class mail return label because then you're only going to be charged four dollars more or less for the return to you. Uh, but if you get caught doing that, that's that's bad, and you're going to get in trouble. And so you don't want to do that, uh, but that's just kind of... Whenever I post these videos, there are always people out there who are saying alternatives to what I say, but the alternatives, in my opinion, are uh, illegal or bad or both sometimes. So you want to make sure that you're getting the tracking uploaded. You want to make sure that you're always demanding returns. Uh, and the third thing I think you can really do to protect yourself is be aware of the condition guidelines in the category that you are selling in. So for video games, as an example, uh, anything above acceptable has to have the manual in there or you have to explicitly say it doesn't have the manual in the title, in the description, even in the pictures. But if you're using a stock photo or you just have one photo of the cover and you don't go into detail 
and you say it's very good condition because in your opinion, it's very good condition, uh, a buyer can say, oh, this is not what I wanted. I want to return this to you. Um, that's not as dangerous of a scam because you're still going to get the item back. You know, they're not, maybe they're going to ask for a refund, but probably not. Uh, but it's the kind of thing where if they want to rent the item, you know, if they want to play a game for a month and then turn it back to you without paying for return shipping, they might be searching out people who are incorrectly using those eBay condition guidelines. That's a lot bigger deal on Amazon than it is on eBay. We can talk about scams on Amazon because they are a little bit different. Uh, but for eBay, I think doing those three things is really going to protect you from 95% of scams. The last thing I'm going to leave you with uh, is that always make sure you're shipping to the address that the buyer puts when they purchase the item. So a, a common scam is they say, oh, I bought it. I used the wrong address. Please ship it to this address, this other one. Because if you do that and it gets delivered there, even if the tracking number is uploaded, uh, if it's not going to the same destination, then they can just say, oh, I didn't get it. It's a really common thing. Uh, you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that if they do come to you and say, hey, I put the wrong address in here, you got to cancel the sale, you got to relist it, and make sure they have the right address. It protects you, it protects them, good for everybody. You do those things without, you know, the rare occurrence of something really weird happening, you're going to be safe from 99% of scams out there. Thanks for watching, guys. Thumbs up if you like this. Uh, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you today or tomorrow or the next day or whenever I see you, I guess.